Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today for this gear talk, we're going to talk just a little bit about headphone amplifiers for guitar. I'm going to compare two different models here for you. One of them is the Flama FX10 and the other is the Fender Mustang Micro. The Mustang Micro retails at $120. The Flama FX10 retails at $80. They have remarkably similar forms and indeed remarkably similar sounds. If you want the gist of this video, it's if you want all the sound and all the function of the Fender Mustang Micro and you want to keep an extra $40 in your bank account, then just buy the Flama. The Flama is literally just as good, if not better, because it also includes a fully functioning drum machine. So if you like to practice with drums, this is uh, going to be a really good value. So the Flama is the better value as far as things go. However, there's a little bit more to it than that. I'll let you hear what these sound like in just a little bit, but I want to talk somewhat about the features. Like I said, they are very similar in form. They have the controls on the same side, colored lights that tell you what amp you're using, this little plug that plugs into the guitar and this part which can be moved around. They have... Um, you know, headphone out and USB-C out. The USB-C can be used for charging or the big value add for these is that they can be used as a sound interface for a DAW on your PC or for your phone. And I've recorded several little um, short bits on my phone using these and they sound really, really, really good. They sound good enough, in fact, that if you needed like a backup amp to just keep in your case, you could just plug this into the PA if you're like your amp blows up. And as long as you don't have to do a lot of like fiddling with like effects and stuff by pressing buttons on it, you could finish up a gig with one of these and it would sound uh, it would still sound really, really good. Both of them have the same Bluetooth function. You can connect your phone to this, uh, which makes the drum machine on this slightly less valuable because if you could connect your phone, you could just use a drum machine app uh, app on your on your Fender one. Uh, but you know, it's it's cool. It's cool to have the extra drum machine built into this, uh, so that's great. Now, I will say there are some better things about the Fender Mustang. One of which is kind of critical depending on what you intend to use this for and so i want to talk about that so the first one is really convenience um, i prefer this volume knob here uh to this little this is a little roller like on a 80s walkman you know uh it works fine but i prefer this this also is easier to navigate as far as the buttons go you just press amp button up and down with this one you have to press the amp button then press up and down to get to the amp model that you want. So you're always pressing two extra buttons. Not a big deal. Is it $40 worth of inconvenience considering you also get the drum machine? And by the drum, by the, by the way, the drum machine does different patterns. There's a whole bunch of different patterns. You can do them fast. You can do them slow. You can turn it up. You can turn it down. So it is a fully functioning um, kind of set of it's not a fully functioning drum machine like an 808 or something like that, but it's definitely good enough for practice. Uh, so you giving up a little bit of convenience to have that that extra bit crammed in there. So if you're just wanting the sound of your guitar, this is a more convenient package to do it in. The next thing is actually really critical. That is if you were intending to use this as a sound interface device for a DAW for your PC like Ableton Live, or you're wanting to run um, Amplitude on top of it, then this is the one that you want. And the reason is this one, even over USB-C, always outputs an amp sound. Okay, so this one has a bypass mode. You can go to just no amp and have the raw sound of your guitar coming out and being recorded into your uh, into your DAW. This one, nope, you're going to get the sound of some kind of amp. Now you can pick a clean amp and do things on top of it, but personally, I prefer just the DI signal. There's no DI signal with this, which makes it. Uh, not usable for a lot of applications, but it is just fine for practice. So if you're just looking for practice and maybe something to plug into your phone, the FX10 is going to do a great job. This is only necessary if you are really wanting to use this as an interface for some more extreme application like Appleton. For me, it's not a deal breaker at all. I have sound interfaces. I have multiple ones. I have other ways to capture my guitar besides this, but this could be a great backup at a gig. You know, if I was using like my laptop at a gig and like my interface died, 
I could keep the show rocking with this, another backup device, and get that clear DI signal out of this. There is a downside, maybe critical to you, that comes with this, which is that this only does sound input to your PC. It doesn't do output. So while it acts as an input interface, it doesn't act as an output interface, meaning you can't plug your headphones into this and hear your DAW. Whereas with this one, you can. The problem is with this is that if you are trying to use your amp sim on your DAW, you get the sound of your guitar coming out of this no matter what, uh, which means it's really a suboptimal playback device anyway for doing the sort of things that I happen to do. But you could use it to as a sound card for your PC if you really wanted to. That's an extra little bit uh, of value there with the Flama. Uh, so overall, I don't think that's a big deal. If you're using ASIO for all, you can set this as the input device and the output device as like your laptop headphone outs, and it will actually work just fine. Uh, so there's really no need for a sound output on this if you're using it on PC. The only time that you might really want it is like on a phone if you don't have a headphone jack on your phone or something like that, uh, but even then, you know, you probably wouldn't need it. So anyway, that's all the stuff you need to know about the technical things. We will pause this and then we will listen to a little bit of what these sound like. I'll just go through it very quickly. There's gonna be a sound in here that's going to be suitable for you. When you look at the manual for the Flamo, you'll notice that they're referring kind of to amps that they're not really allowed to say, this is a simulation of an angle. This is a simulation of a Mesa Boogie. This is a sim of a Fender 64, right? You know, you, they can't say that. So they kind of hint to you what it is. It's a 5153. Okay, yeah, it's a 5150 or 6505 uh, high gain amplifier that Eddie Van Halen used. So if you want that sound, it's on there. And there's also EQs that you can go through, by the way, to find the right sound. So it's pretty easy and quick to dial in the sound. The last thing I'll say is if you're comparing this to the Nux Mighty Plug Pro, why did I choose these? Um, I got a deal on this. That's why I ended up with it. But like, um, why would I choose these over the Nux Mighty Plug? Is that these don't require an amp, they are standalone devices, they work all by themselves. No phone app required. So in 20 years, I could potentially still be using these. Now the battery may die, which is a problem, right? But I have like my Nintendo DS, the battery still works amazingly, right? Um, 20 years might be forever to you if you're young, but I have a ton of gear that I've used for 20 years from the time I was a teenager and it still works and uh, it still works because it doesn't rely on software. It's a self-enclosed thing. How many pieces of software do you use from 1999? I have gear that I have from 1999. Do you use any software still from 1999? I think the oldest piece of software I run is Morrowind from 2000 three or 2002. Uh, and I even use a newer version of the EXE. I use OpenMW. I don't use the original program to play Morrowind e anymore. So you're relying on with like the Nux Mighty Plug Pro, you're relying on them maintaining an app that will work on future hardware in order for you to use your headphone amplifier to its full extent uh, in the future. And I don't love that. And this is just a plug and play. It works super easy. But anyway, let's take a listen to them. All right, so first step, so first step is the Mustang Micro. This is the DI sound. No amp, no effects. So you can just hear what the guitar sounds like raw. So that's it raw. Um, and then we can go through just a couple of different uh, amp effects to uh, to hear what it sounds like. Like I said, it's a little bit hard to adjust on the fly. You may have to like pick your guitar up to do it. Uh, but we'll go through, and you know, you can hear just a little bit of reverb, and then we can change the amp from a, a DI to something else. Here's the. Uh, That's like a twin reverb sound. We'll just go through all of the amps real quick and hear them. This is all front pickup. Starting to get more high gain.
sounds pretty good. Back to DI. Okay. So those are all the sounds of the amps on the Mustang Micro. All right, let's take a look at the Flama. This one has some preset effects for each amp, which is an easy and quick way to get to the sounds that you want to get to. That's supposed to be a Fender 65 Twin Reverb. And then uh, Deluxe Reverb. Sounds okay. We have to turn up the volume. There we go. Keep going here. That's an acoustic sim. Not a bad acoustic sim as far as those things go. Uh, this one is the supersonic. This is a good sound for like some. some good sounds out of that and then there's a 59 baseman pretty good sound and then we'll go uh, one more dr. Z who has a tremolo built into it here's the JCM 800 doesn't sound as high gain as I would expect from a JCM 800 uh, Marshall Plexi. That yeah, sounds like a Marshall Plexi. Vox AC30. Breaking up here. And then Angle Powerball. Very dry if you want to. Let's keep going. We have the Mesa Boogie. Mark V. Not bad for a Mesa Boogie. Orange 8030. Not bad. And a Soldano SL100 classic amp. Good sounds, and then finally the 5150. And if you put a little like uh, delay or something on it, you, know, you could get that nice high gain tone with that if you wanted to. So that's all the sounds that they have on them. Um, what I do like about them, by the way, is that they have this form factor that allows you to plug them into a strat. Uh, so they'll plug into anything, which is really good. So you could even plug it into this offset strat input jack and it works just fine for that. So anyway, you can check those out. Like I said, my general my general uh, piece of advice is that if you want to save 40 bucks and pretty much get the same function as the Fender, then just get the Flama. Yeah, there's no DI setting, um, but you could do like a really dry, uh, you know, Fender amp and then just kind of go with it from there if you wanted to run amp sims. And I, my guess is most people are not going to do that anyway. What they want is they want the uh, ability to practice with a pair of headphones, to plug in some headphones and get their guitar out and just practice spend some time with their instrument which is great these are great for that so anyway guys thanks so much for watching this don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to go to the no talkie talkie channel youtube.com slash at zool online i'll have it linked down below it has all my weird music that i've been working on over the last um, three or four months mostly improvisational like long form ambient rock and instrumental rock stuff so check that out and i will see you all um next time have a great one
That's pretty good. 